Okay, so there was issues with the grouping stuff from last time. So let's um, let's pick up a few of those um, that we can end up doing and seeing if we can get those to come out the way they're supposed to. Um, how about this one? If we have 12 r cubed plus 33 r squared minus 4 r minus 11. So let's see what we can do with this thing. And this is from um, 6.1c is where that happens to be. So our grouping means, and we're going to use this today too, because it's what we're going to use in 6.3 um, to solve some of our problems too. So first off, if I group stuff, I want to group them in groups of two. And when I group it in groups of two, I want to see if I can factor. So if that were the only thing they gave me, that was the only thing I see, can I pull anything out of it? I can pull out a three, actually. A three R squared will pull out of this. You see that whole thing in there, three R squared now? 12 divided by three is four. R cubed divided by R squared is an R. 33 divided by 3 is 11, and the R squared and R squared cancel. So we're good there so far, correct? Okay, then if I were only given that piece, what could I pull out of it? Uh-huh. Now remember, if it leads negative, meaning that the first piece of it's negative, I need to pull out a negative, and then I would look to see if I could pull out a number, which I can't. So a negative 4 divided by negative 1 is a positive 4. The R just comes along. Negative 11 divided by negative 1 is a positive 11. And so therefore, what we need to do is this one and this one are identical. So that's the binomial that's factoring out. So I yank it out of that first part. It leaves me with a 3R squared. I yank it out of the second part. It leaves me with a minus 1. And that's what it factors to. Okay, does that help? That makes sense? Okay. And now, um, the other thing, let's see what we can do with, um, let's see what we can do with this one. 10CP minus 10AY plus P. U minus 10 C Y. I don't know. Does that look right? Oh, this is supposed to be a U Y. Sorry. I was looking back at it and I thought, that doesn't look right. I don't have anything in common with stuff. So, um, can I pull stuff out just as it is? I can't, right? Because this can pull a 10 out, but I can't pull out anything letter-wise out of that one. This one, if I group those two together, I can't pull anything out of there. So, maybe I need to regroup. Remember, we had to regroup once in a while. In today's exercises, we won't have to regroup. They will be all right there for you to work with. But in one or 6.1c, they kind of put grouping things in there, so you had to regroup. So 10cp, and I'm just going to put pu with it, minus 10uy minus 10cy. So um, is there anything I can pull out now? So the first piece, I can pull out a p. The second piece, I can pull out a negative 10 when I group it in twos, and I can pull out a y, which leaves me with u. Negative 10 divided by negative 10 is gone. Ys are gone, and I get a c, but what do I notice? Those two do not match, right? So this is really not factorable. No matter how I regroup it, no matter what I do to it, 
it will not, in no shape or form, is going to factor. So that's what I'm left with. So it's not factorable. So if you're looking at it, you're not going to factor it, okay, um, for that one. So do not, um, we can't do anything with it. Does that help? Still got a question, Paul? No? Are we good now? Because we're going to do a lot more of these today. So it's not like this is the end of those. So we're going to see them again. Um, any other things we need to go over from 6.1? We had to pull out stuff in uh, 6.1a. We were just looking for the greatest common factors. 6.1b, we were actually factoring that greatest common factor out. And then this was what we did in C. So we're good there? Okay. Then let's go on. This is the ground floor. What we learned today is basically the main pieces of Chapter 6. Chapter 6 all relies on these. The key thing with Chapter 6, though, is if you take intermediate algebra, which some might go to intermediate algebra and some of you might head on to statistics, depending on what your degree happens to be, because you can go to statistics now instead of going to intermediate algebra, um, you may not go on. But in in uh, the first chapter in intermediate algebra, we need to be able to factor because it's all factoring. It's not just one fact thing to factor, but it's a variety of stuff to factor. And so you have to be aware of that and make sure that you um, end up getting those pieces together um, when you do that factoring. So let's look at some of these. Now the sheet I handed out to you, that extra credit sheet that had all of these things on it, this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at all these polynomial product pieces over here, but we're going to take those things and we're going to break it apart to get this piece out of it. So we're going to look at all kinds of these all set up. They won't be set up with multiply and add in them, but we're going to use that same process in there to solve those. So what we did here is what we're going to do now when we factor stuff. So in 6.2, they might give you this, for instance, x squared plus 8x plus 12, and say factor it. So what's it going to factor to? So if I use my rules that we did on that extra credit sheet and that practice piece, the practice piece said, and again, if you didn't, you're going to take this n value, and you're going to find things that multiply to give you 12, but at the same time, add to give you a positive 8 in the center. Taking your pluses along with you, this is a positive 12 and this is a positive 8, what are my factors going to be? 6 and 2. Mm -hmm. So 6 times 2 gives me 12 and 6 plus 2 gives me 8. So this whole thing factors to x plus 6 and x plus 2. Two, and that's what it factors to. If you want to check them, 6 is great for checking. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is a plus 2x. 6 times x is a plus 6x. And 6 times 2 is a plus 12. So it does check. So x squared, these two added, plus 12. And that's what's going to end up giving me. So I got right back to where I started at. So this is what you would type in for your answer. Okay, so how about um, this one? y squared minus 8y minus 20. <clears throat> so once again, last things multiply, give you a negative 20, but at the same time add to give me a negative 8. Mm -hmm. 2 times a negative 10. And 2 plus a negative 10 gives me my two answers. We good there? You guys able to think on that one and come up with those? And so then what it factors to is y plus 2 and y minus 10. Okay, so y plus 2 and y minus 10. If you know your multiplication facts and you know what combines and what creates numbers, Getting to this with the factoring is not too hard. But you got to know what are factors or what are things that multiply to give me a negative 20 that add to a negative 8. And the key here, too, is when you look at this, 
we know it's going to be a y and a y because it's a y squared out in front. But we know that to get that 20, it's going to be a plus and a minus because that's the only things in here with that multiplication. It's got to be a minus times a plus to get it. And so then when I write this piece out, the other key is that middle is negative. So that means your negative factor needs to be bigger. So that's the piece that you're looking for. So I wouldn't have to try uh, a over here a negative 2 times a positive 10 because I'm not going to get a negative 8 out of that. Okay, I've got a positive 8. So if I pay attention to this piece, it's going to tell me that that negative factor is going to be my bigger one. Okay, in there. So that's kind of adding a little extra to that. So that's why that sheet is really helpful because it gets you thinking about what you got to do um, with your factoring and with what happens and what takes place with that. So um, you end up with those. What about this one? X squared minus 7X plus 12. Mm-hmm. Because the 12 is positive and the added part is negative, that means these have to be identical. And because it's negative, I know I have a negative factor times a negative factor. So they're both minuses and it's a negative 3 and a negative 4. Questions on that part? Sometimes those combinations um, end up being the, the hardest part. So there's basically three or four combinations with these. This is type 1. This is type 2. Type 3. And we need one more to fill out all of our possibilities in here of what we could end up having. And that would be this one. So type 4 might be something that looks like x squared plus 4x minus 12. And that's type 4. So what does this mean? I've got a negative 12 that multiplies at the same time adds to a plus 4. So what's its combinations? So what would its values be if I were factoring it, which I'm going to factor it? Be it's going to be a plus and a minus, but because it's a plus in the middle, that factor needs to be bigger. So the positive factor needs to be bigger. So in this case, it's 6 times a negative 2, <clears throat> or 6 plus a negative 2 to end up getting my value that I need in there. So 6 is the plus, minus 4 is the other part. If you check it, x times x is x squared. Negative 4x and a positive 6x. Negative 4, what did I put 4 there? 2. <laughs> See, I need to check it, didn't I? Um, 2 times x times negative 2 is negative 2x, and a positive 6x is positive 4, and a positive 6 times negative 2 is a negative 12. So we did do it right. Okay, so we come up with the conclusion and what we do need to have in there. Okay, all right. Um, so let's do some more. Um, factoring, of course, keeps going and coming up with other things, but that's the four types. So our four types are the ones that have a plus and a plus in my binomial that end up giving me two binomials with pluses in them. Another one is a um, minus and a minus. That one's going to give me a minus and a, pos a plus, but the minus is bigger. Another one is a minus and a plus. That's going to give us a minus and a minus, because that's the only way to get a plus. And finally, the last one is a plus and a minus. And I'll put X's in the front of these so they look kind of like they should. <clears throat> and it's a plus and a minus, but the plus side is bigger. So we can gain all that stuff out of the pieces that we happen to have. So it all 
kind of fits in there and it all kind of comes out as what we have with those. All right, so if we can get this down, we got her all down. We got it great. You guys pretty good with this, you think? Okay, so if we kind of stuff and pull all that stuff together, that's what we get in our factoring. So how about this one? X squared minus 10X plus 21. What would my factored values be with this one? Mm -hmm. X, is it negative 3 or positive 3? Both being negatives, yep, negative 3 and a negative 7. That's the only way I can get a positive 21 on the end. We good? Okay, what do you think? Yes? Okay, all right. Um... How about this one? X squared plus 6X plus 8. What is it going to factor to? Both are pluses, so I know it's a pluses in there. So factors of 8 that add to 6 are 2 and 4. We good? Okay. 2 and 4. These will never be decimals in here, okay? They'll never be fractions for you guys. Um, intermediate algebra, we get into doing some other stuff with those. But we get into quadratics, uh, equations, and stuff with that. But it's basically what you're doing in here is solving quadratics. But we'll get to that a little bit later on in the, in the chapter as well. How about this one? M squared plus 12M plus 27. 9 and 3? M plus 9 and M plus 3? Y'all agree? No. No? Yeah. Yeah, 9. <laughs> 9 plus 3 does equal 12, yes. Mm -hmm. 9 plus 3 does equal 12, so we're good there then. So we got that piece come together. Okay. Um, now, in some of these, they may not have and start them out with a right straight value of m squared. You may start out with 10, 10 um, m to the fifth minus 20 m to the fourth minus 80 m to the third. Now if you start out this way, now we're taking 6.1 and we're putting it with 6.2. So now I need to look at it and always, always, always look at these and see if you can factor something out. So between 10, negative 20, and a negative 80, what can I pull out of those? I can pull out a 10 m to the fifth, m to the fourth, and m to the third. So back to 6.1, 5, 4, 3. So I can pull out the smallest. And what does it leave me with? It leaves me with an m squared. Negative 20 divided by 10 is a negative 2. m to the fourth and m to the third leaves an m. Negative 80 divided by 10, negative 8. m cubed and m cubed are gone. Okay, so now I need to look at just this piece, keeping this other piece in mind that it's still there, can I factor this other part? So factors of a negative 8, or things that multiply to give me a negative 8, that add to give me a negative 2 in the middle, what will they be? Four and... 2, who's negative and who's positive? Negative 4 plus 2, yep. And you would enter all of that into Hawks for your answer, okay? Don't miss this first piece. That's usually the mistake that everybody makes. You get so wrapped up in factoring this other piece that you forget your 10, m to the third. 
Okay, so common mistakes made is um, doing that. Um, let's see if we can get uh, another one of those. How about this one? That one out of the way. Um, 7w to the 6th plus 21w to the 5th minus 126w to the 4th. So see what you get if you factor that. So what do you guys have out there? Take the 7w to the fourth out and we get this. But is that where I stop? Nope. 7w to the fourth. A w and a w, it's a minus 18, so I got a minus and a plus. My plus needs to be bigger because the middle is positive. So what would my factors be? Of 18. Six and... Three, mm -hmm. six is positive, three is my negative piece because I want a positive three in the middle, okay? So that becomes my answer to this one. So this again is what I would type into Hawks. Okay, what do you think? Think you can handle these? Okay. Again, it doesn't get any more trickier than this piece. Sometimes you can look at this piece, though, and it will not factor, so just be aware of that. But has this been considered not factorable if I pull something out? No. It's been factored because I pulled something out of it. So um, just be aware of that, that sometimes they don't end up factoring, and they don't end up um, doing other things in there. They do give you a reverse of stuff, and that reverse might be something like that says, um, consider the following integers. And the following integers are 9 comma 10. It says for the two numbers, um, we want to turn it back into factors. So what this means is x is equal to 9 and x is equal to 10. Okay with that part? x is 9 and x is 10. If I reverse it, that means I'm going to minus 9 from both sides and find x minus 9 is equal to 0. If I minus 10, I find x minus 10 is equal to 0. So what they're asking you to do is say, okay, what would the two factors be? Well, my two factors are x minus 9 and x minus 10. So then if I reverse it and go back to chapter 5, I can FOIL these and get x times x is x squared. Negative 10 and a negative 9 is a negative 19x. Negative 9 times a negative 10 is a plus 90. So I get back to where I have what it may have started out to be. Okay, so I don't, I can't remember if these show up in there or whether they don't show up in there, and I think they do. Um, so just be careful and watch and see if you end up with something that looks like that within your homework. So if they give you two numbers, you got to reverse it. So if they had given you a negative 3 and 4, I would find x equals a negative 3 and x equals 4 move it back over, I have x plus 3, and I have x minus 4, 
So x plus 3 times x minus 4, and I would FOIL it and get x squared. Minus 4x plus 3x is a minus x. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. So it's just kind of reversing it and taking it back to where you started at with those. I just wanted to make sure that you had that one and were aware of it. Okay? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Um, one other one that shows up is if they give you the area of a rectangle. Is n squared plus 12n plus 32, and they say find the length and width of the rectangle. And you're like, huh? That's kind of odd. So what I can do is because I know area is length times width, if I can factor this thing, I will know what my length and width happens to be. So does this factor? So n and n factors of 32 that add to 12. Mm -hmm. So plus 4, plus 8. So what this means is on my rectangle, one side is n plus 8, the other side is n plus 4. So if that one pops up, I can't guarantee that's not, but I wanted to make sure you had it in there if it did, okay? So if it were something that would show up. We, yes, so on this one for the answer, you would type in your length as n plus 8 and your width as n plus 4. Okay, usually your length is longer than your width, so this is longer because it's got eight and this one has four. So. Okay, yep, again, um, that might show up and again, it might not show up. So you think you got that section down? Okay, just be careful, make sure you pull out what you can and then factor your pieces that you happen to have with it. 6.3 has two pieces to it. It has section A, and section A is trial and error. And in section 6.3, it seems like you get more errors than you get more trials, okay? Um, and it's a hard way to factor. I know when I did all my math classes, we used trial and error, and you get really good at it. If you know your all of your factors and you know all the combinations that create all kinds of numbers but it's not always the easiest to do so what I'm gonna do for you guys is we're gonna leave section 6.3a and I'm gonna have you do section 6.3a using 6.3b okay and 6.3b is the AC method and you will find it's a whole lot easier. It's a system that you can follow. You might look at it and say, oh, God, but it's going to take me a long time to do it that way. Um, but it really doesn't. Once you get in the hang of how to use the AC method, it goes by pretty quick, and it works out pretty well. And it's got a system to it. Trial and error um, doesn't have a system to it. And we'll take a look at um, a question and see if we can... can see what happens with it. So if we had 2x squared minus x minus 6, if I use trial and error, what I would have to do is, of course, first look and see if I can factor anything out. Does anything factor out of there? I have a 2, but I can't take a 2 out because it doesn't, there's no 2 here. I have an x squared, an x, and no x, so I can't take out an x, so I can't factor it. So if I can't factor it, I have to have another way of taking care of it. So if I use trial and error, trial and error would mean that I could have a 2x and an x to create this at the beginning of it. I know one's going to be negative and one's going to be positive, but I have to be careful where I put those two because I need to make sure this comes out bigger in the middle. 
So if I get factors of 6, and you'll see why this is kind of tough to do, factors of 6 might be 3 and 1. And um, if I go 2 times 1, I get 2x. 3 times 1 is 3x. I was lucky. I happened to put them in the right spot. I get my negative 1 in the middle. But they don't always come out that way. And the reason trial and error is also tough is because if you end up with something that's got some pretty big size, fair size numbers involved with it, like 10x squared plus 13x minus 3, and I got to use trial and error to solve this thing, it could be 10 and 1 could be my factors, or 10, it could be 2 and 5 are my factors. So I get a lot of stuff in there with trial and error. So that's why we're going to use this AC method in order to solve these things instead. Okay? And that involves 6.1C when we get those combining and pulling stuff out and you have four terms to it. So let's take this one that we just got done solving and take it over and use the AC method on it. So it's 2x squared minus x minus 6. So we're going to use the AC method with this. And what that method is, is step one, multiply the first term times the last term. That's the A times C. That's where it gets its name from, A times C. So if I do that from step one, what am I going to get? 2x squared times a negative 6 is a negative 12x squared. That's step one. We good there? 2x squared times a negative 6 gives me a negative 12x squared. Step two, find factors that multiply to give you The answer from step one. But add to give the middle term. So in step two, I want things that multiply to give me a negative 12x squared. At the same time, add to give me a negative x. So what would they be? So that's, again, that same sheet, that same process. It's the same thing we just got done doing in um, 2.1, or 2.2, I should say. So it combines in there. It holds a, plays a role in that. So what are my factors? So that's all I'm asking you for. Negative 12, that give me a negative 1. What would they be? Negative 4x and a positive 3x, and a negative 4x plus 3x gives me my negative 1x. We all good? Okay. Step three, replace the middle term in the equation with the new added values. So step three, I'm going to take 2x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 6. So I'm taking that middle term, taking it out, and replacing it. We good so far? What do you guys think? So far so good? Replace the middle term. Step four, group in twos and factor each. So this is where 6.1c comes into play. So 2x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 6, group in twos. And you will not have to rearrange anything. They will be where they're supposed to be automatically for you. Okay. So they are not going to need to be rearranged. So then, factor it. So I can pull out a 2x 
and I get x minus 2. Second one, I can pull out a 3, leaves me with x minus 2, and if they match, I'm good. And I get it factored, okay? And finally, step 6 is check. So x times 2x is 2x squared, 3x minus 4x minus 6, and I get what I started with, okay? So you might look at this and say, ah, it doesn't look, I can get it up here where you can see it. That doesn't look like it's too simple, it's got too much stuff in it, but it's the explanation that really makes them long. So, um, what do you think? We're going to do a lot more of them. So this isn't the last one. we got bunches of them to do. So we'll go through and, and figure out what we do need to do with them to make them work. Okay? So it's that grouping stuff. It's that pulling together of different things in there. So recapping what I did. First term times last term. Got that. Multiplied them. Found out what the factors that multiply to give me that, and they, they add to give me the middle term of whatever it is. The middle term in this case was negative x. Then replace my middles with that value. Grouped in twos. Factored each of these pieces. Came up with my piece. This is what you will put into Hawks. That's the answer you'll put in there. And then finally I checked it just to make sure I did it right um, with those. Okay. Yes? What do you think? Okay. Let's do that other one. I had this other one listed here. So let's see what we can do with that one and see if we can get the stuff out of there. So um, x squared, 10x squared, plus 13x minus 3. So let's see if we can use this AC method to get it factored. So 10x squared times negative 3 is a negative 30x squared. So what are factors of a negative 30 that are going to add to give me a positive 13x? Any ideas? 10 and 3? But be careful, this is negative. So this means one factor needs to be negative, the other factor has to be positive. So if I put 10 and 3 in here and I add them, what was it? 15 and 2. Mm -hmm. 15 needs to be negative and 2 needs to be positive and they have x's with them. So negative 15x plus 2x is 13x. Okay with that part? Yes? Oh, other way around. 15's positive, 2's negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we kind of got sign issues there, didn't we? Okay, so be careful with your signs. Make sure that your signs end up matching um, with what you're supposed to have. So now, replace my middle with what I found. And... Then we're going to um, group in twos and factor out what I can. So what comes out of this first one? Is there anything I can pull out of there? 10x squared plus 15x. It's kind of nice when, when things you learn start following through with the next piece that you got to learn. So what can I factor out of here? 10 and 15, I can pull out a 5. And x squared and x, I can pull out an x, yep. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. x squared and x leaves an x. 15 divided by 5 is 3. x's are gone, so we're good there. What about this piece? Again, if it leads negative, I know i got to pull out a negative. And the only thing I can pull out of there is a negative 1. So I get 2x, negative 2 divided by negative is positive 2, and x comes. Negative 3 and negative 1 is a positive 3. And these should match. If you did everything perfect, those will match. So my answer is 2x plus 3 times 5x minus 1. Okay?
So that's what that will factor out to be when we work with those. No, not at all. Mm -mm. Good question to ask. Because what if you up here, instead of writing it that way, you wrote it as negative 2x plus 15x? Will not make a difference. So 10x squared minus 2x plus 15x uh, minus 3. If I regroup it now, the only difference is the common factor is going to change. I can pull out a 2 out of here and an x. Here I can pull out a 3. And notice what just changed. This was spread out before. And this was my common factor. Now it's the common factor. And this common factor over here is spread out. So it doesn't make any difference. So however you put the middle in there, stick it in. However you want to put it in. Because this, the only difference is it comes out just opposite of what I have here. As long as your two binomials are correct, the order that you put them in doesn't make a difference. Okay, So you can put either order in there. So you want to watch that and, and uh, make sure that you get your, get your pieces in where they happen to be um, when you're working with those. Um, how about this one? 3x squared plus x minus 4. Again, always look to see if you can take something out of it. And numerically, 3, 1, and a negative 4 can't take anything out there. x squared, x, and no x. So I can't take an x out. So I can just hop in and start doing my method. First term times last term. And I want to multiply here and add there. <clears throat> So that whole process that we used in 6.1 and we had the extra credit sheet was also um, what you can do with this piece too. So, um, so what does this happen? So what's my factors going to be? I know one's negative and one's positive. The positive factor's got to be bigger because it's positive for my middle. So, um, 4 and 3, okay. So a negative 3x plus 4x gives me my 1 in the middle. Replace my middle. So this was an x in the center, and it's still an x in the center. Notice if you did your math in there, it's still going to be that piece. So, by group in twos, what happens? Um, I can pull a 3x out of the first. Second, I can pull out a 4. And so, 3x plus 4 and x minus 1 is what it factors to. And the neat thing is, is if you, if you foil this, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times a negative 1 is a negative 3x. 4 times x is a positive 4x. And 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4. So basically, all you're doing is forcing it to have all of your pieces in there, okay, that you would get if you foiled it. So that's what's happening is it's getting it foiled back to what it was, okay? Yes? Okay. Flip this over. And how about this one? 2, no, hmm, 16a cubed b minus 28a squared b plus 6ab. So what can we do with this whole thing? So always the first step whenever you start any type of factoring problem is you're always going to look and see if you can pull something out. Because sometimes if you can pull something out, it takes the whole thing and makes it a whole lot easier. So between 16, 28, and 6, what number's in common? So what would be my greatest common factor? A 2, okay? 
a cubed, a squared, and an a. I can yank out an a. A b, a b, a b. I can also take out a b. Okay. So walk yourself through it. Make sure you look for those pieces and look for that section that you can pull out. 16 divided by 2 is, of course, 8. A cubed and A is an A squared. Bs are gone. 28 divided by 2 is 14. A squared and A leaves an A. B's gone. 6 divided by 2 is 3. A, B is gone off of that altogether. Okay? We good there so far? Okay. Now I need to see if I can do some stuff with this thing. So don't forget, down here, when you get to your final answer, you still need to put that 2AB in there, okay, when you're all done. Don't leave it off because it's kind of like a spoiled kid that gets left at home. They create all kinds of havoc. So um, if you don't include them, they're not happy. So now I'm back up here. 8A squared times 3 is 24A squared. So I need things that multiply to give me that. But at the same time, add to a negative 14A. Being that this is negative, I know both of these are negatives because a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So what are factors of 24 that add to 14? Mm -hmm. Yep. So a negative 2A plus a negative 12A is going to give me my negative 14, so now i got to replace my middle. But when you replace your middle with this one, don't go back up here. Don't go to your original, you go to this one. So 8A squared minus 2A minus 12A plus 3. So this goes to here, not to the original. Group in twos. So, first part, I can pull out a 2 and an A. Leaves me with 4A minus 1. This one, I can pull out a negative 3. Leaves me with 4A minus 1. So, this whole thing is 4A minus 1 times 2A minus 3. So, my final answer has to have that 2AB in it. To get my final piece. Okay, so it seems to be, because it's got a process and we're using something that just follows along and goes right straight through it, it's easier than using trial and error. And trial and error would take us a while to do, okay? So don't do 6.3a using trial and error. Use the method in 6.3b. So you want to do 6.3b first, then go back and do 6.3a, okay, so that you know what you're doing with that. Now, if you use tutor in 6.3a, it will tutor you, tutor you using the trial and error method. Okay, so just be aware of that. So don't hit tutor when you're, that's why you do 6.3b first and then come back and do a so that you get your pieces in there. Okay, what do you think? Okay, let me see. Well, I'll give you another one up here and see if you can, can get it to um, work out as well. Um, now, sometimes they put letters on both ends, so we need to take a look at what happens with one of those, if I can find one, and I'm somehow not finding one. See what you can do with this one. And this one doesn't have letters on both ends, but 12x cubed, I'll make it have letters on each end, minus 26x squared y squared plus 12xy cubed. So we'll make it have letters on both ends. So first off, let's see what you can pull out. So what could I yank out of there? 12, 26, and 12. What do they have in common? The only thing is a 2. x cubed, x squared, and an x. So I can pull out a x. Y, y squared, y cubed, a y. So that leaves me with 6x squared. Ys are gone. 
minus 13xy plus 6y squared. We good with that part? Okay. Multiply the two together. 6x uh, squared times 6y squared. Leaves me with 36x squared y squared. <clears throat> that multiply. So multiply to give me that, but add to give me a negative 13xy. So factors of 36 that add to a negative 13. Basically, it's just the numerical parts. So what would they be? Mm -hmm. So negative 9. Now when you break this apart, it's going to be 9xy times a negative 4xy because a negative 9xy plus a negative 4xy is going to equal 13xy. We good there? Okay. Then replace my middle. So 6x squared minus 9xy minus 4xy plus 6y squared. Group it. So if we group those and we pull something out, what do we end up with? So first I can pull out what? A 3 and an x. Leaves me with 2x minus 3y. Yay or nay? Okay. Second one. What do we pull out of the second one? A, what kind of 2, though? Yeah, negative 2y. If you pull out just a 2, you're not going to match. Your signs would be off. So make sure if it leads negative, you pull out a negative. So that leaves me with 2x plus, nope, 2x minus 3y. And so 2x minus 3y and 3x minus 2y, and don't forget your lonely piece you pulled out at the very top. So that becomes your answer. Okay? <clears throat> Not bad? Think you can handle those? Hopefully. Factoring, once you get factoring down, if you know exactly what you're doing with it, Hey, it makes the world go a whole lot easier in algebra <clears throat> um, when you're working with those. They do give you these. Let me put one of them up here. Where you have a minus 5b squared minus 12 times a minus 5b plus <clears throat> 35. Looks odd weird, looks strange. Um, <clears throat> we just did a whole bunch of things on this order in intermediate algebra. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a minus 5b and we're going to set that equal to u. u meaning a nondescript variable, but I'm going to replace every to where I've got an a minus 5b with a u. I have u squared minus 12u plus 35. Then it gets to be something I can factor. So now I could look at that and come up with what its factors would be. Since it's a single U out in front, I can just put that. What are factors of 35 that add to a negative 12? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is once I get this factored as U's, I'm going to replace the U with what it is equal to. So it's equal to A minus 5B. So really, I have U minus 7 is really A minus 5B, because I replaced the U with that, minus 7. And the other one, u minus 5, is really a minus 5b minus 5. Kind of a strange way of looking at stuff. But 
it's what you do. So you replace it with you, then take it and factor it. So that value changes in there. So um, from one to the other. So I pulled it out, stuck a U in its place, factored that, came up with what it was, then replaced U with what U was equal to so that I could factor it. Here's one more that's just like it. So what happens with this one? 4 times A minus 2B squared minus 12 times A minus 2B plus 8. So I yanked out a U, <clears throat> or yanked out the A minus 2B, stuck a U in its place, then factor it. So what will that thing factor to? Did I put something in there wrong? Oh, because this should be a 2 back here. That's what I did. No, that's an 8. But 4 goes into 8 twice times 2. Yeah, there we go. Then I'm going to have a minus 2 and a minus 1 there. I was going to say, that didn't factor right. Not factoring quite. So, yeah. So then replace U with what it's equal to. So A minus 2B minus 2. And A minus 2B minus 1. And you're good to go. Okay. So it's using that substitution piece and replacing U so that then I can factor it. Okay. So I don't know. What do you think? Want to try them? Attempt them? See what you can do with them? Okay. Um, you need to do more practice? Are you good? Think you're good? Okay. So um, take the rest of the time that we have in class and you can um, end up taking that time to work on your